No, we cleaned up the tag room, took the inventory. We stretched that section of fence. And what about that gate? Uh, we hung that this morning, even all the hinges. And we stack and cover the winter feed. We got nothing else to do. Well, we still got to round up them strays down some of the canyon. Yeah, we shouldn't round them up for another week. We round them up now to just stray again. You're right. We ain't got nothing to do. That's what I said. Hey. Anything I can do for you? Yeah. We're going to find Ben Cartwright. He's right in the house. I'm his son. Maybe I can help. I wanted your help. I'd ask for I don't think I like him. Oh. Ben Cartwright! Open this door and face me like a man! I know I don't like him. Ben Cartwright! What's the trouble, boys? Oh, we heard him calling out there. You thought we'd come in and see what the trouble was. <laughs> He's an old friend of mine. I've told you all about him, this Montana Perkins. <laughs> Montana is my son, Joseph. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry. Hoss. Hoss. <laughs> and uh, there's that cheap cook and bodyguard, Hop Singh. Oh, pleased to meet you. <laughs> Boss told us a whole lot about Montana Perkins. Well, he might have left a few things out. <laughs> One, they, uh, they don't call me Montana anymore. No, I'm the Reverend Carl Perkins, huh? The Reverend? You a preacher now? Are you preaching? Are you surprised? <laughs> well, yes, a little bit. Faith doesn't always come in a pretty package. When he called me to do his work, he didn't ask me how I dressed or what my manners were like. All he wanted to know was how strong I believed. And sometimes a man's not the best judge of his own salvation. Like they say, the way is hard and the road's long. And none of us are going to get out of this alive. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> They're two fine-looking boys, Ben. Yeah. Come on, sit down. Uh, what brings you out this way? Looking for somebody to wear that. I heard that Joe Walters lived somewhere east of here. And I remember that big man could stare down a whole town. Never seen Joe around for quite a while. Did you find him? Yeah. Sitting on his porch in the sun with his hands all knotted up. Grandkids swarming around his feet. Yeah, well, we're... All getting older. True, true, but some are getting older than others. 
And I'm coming back empty-handed again. Now, if I could just find somebody, even somebody temporary, it'd be a big help. Every day the law's not there, that town sinks a little deeper. Well, it's just something temporary. I mean, until you can get somebody well, else. Just, 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 just. Oh, I've been a sheriff before. I've had experience. Of course you've had experience. Doing what? Looking after the officer for a couple of days? Well, this is just temporary. Besides, I ain't got nothing to do around here. Now, look, Hoss. Now, wait a minute, Ben. Why, Hoss? Oh, let's just say that it's one step up that long, hard road for me. Oh, Loney, you just want to get out of the cattle drive. Yeah, don't forget, Roundup is in two weeks. Just temporary, Paul. How long have you been looking for a sheriff? Off and on, two years. Uh -huh. uh, what do they call this place? Trouble. No, I mean the name of the town. That's the name of it. Trouble. Oh, why would anybody want to name a town Trouble? You'll find out. Oh, them all about New Orleans. Uh, well, well, anyway, there was this girl named Alice. We called her Alice from Dallas by way of San Antonio. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think they'd be interested. Well, surely I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah, Paul, you never did tell us about her. Well, there was nothing to tell. Nothing to tell? One tenant? Oh, yeah. Well, wow. it's been nice seeing you again, Ben. And it's sure been a pleasure meeting you boys. Good to see you again. Take care. You ready, Hoss? Yep. Hey, brother, where are you going? I'll see if I can find out about Alice from Dallas by way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy, Paul. I'll see you. Take care of yourself. <laughs> That sure is a funny name for a town, huh? Dallas? No, not Dallas. Trouble. Oh. Funny name. Probably just like any other town. <laughs> town council, only not during business hours. Well, are you hungry, Hoss? Well, I can do it, Mike. You serve a pretty good steak down at the saloon. Why don't you run on down there, and I'll round up the sheriff and the judge, a couple others you want to meet, and come on later. Sounds fun. Right. See you later. What's your name, big fella? Folks call me Hoss. My name is Lily. Do you like it? Yeah. Real pretty, it fits. Well, thank you. I picked it out of a book. My real name is Ethiopia. It don't go with the outfit. Uh, the outfit fits, too. But just barely. Uh, one state dinner. Can I go 
glass of water. Uh, bring a shot of good whiskey to chase that with. We ain't got any good whiskey. It runs from bad to worse to rot gut. Bring her bed if that's the best you got. Tell me, Lily. Did he serve you real whiskey? Well, what difference does it make? It looks like whiskey. It costs just the same. I drink it, and you pay for it. Lily, tell me. <clears throat> What's a girl like you doing in a nice place like this? Just trying to make ends meet. The Bodie brothers are coming. The Bodie brothers are coming. Well, he sure knows how to clear a place out, don't he? Well, most folks come in here for a drink. The Bodie brothers come in to pick fights with strangers. <laughs> There ain't no strangers left. What do they do in a cage like that? Well, one of them stands out front and throws them in off the street. And you'd better go before they get here. I ain't finished my steak yet. Well, look, you come back later. We'll have our drink then.
75 cents, sir. Just about everything, Sheriff Cartwright. And if there's anything else you need to know, our deputy here, Chip Chesterfield, he'll give you the answers. <laughs> and if you need me, well, you know where to find me. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't. Well, you just ask anybody and they'll tell you. Huh. And if you need any help at all, you know who you can turn to. <laughs> Uh, uh, who can I turn to? Absolutely nobody. They're not bad people, boss. They just don't care about anybody or anything, except themselves. You with James, eh? Possibly. But first, I gotta get their attention. Well, seems like a pretty peaceful little town. At times. Jim, how come they didn't make you sheriff? Sure? Too temporary. I've been a deputy here 12 years. I've seen 15 chefs come and go for one reason or another, mostly the other.
I'm sure he's doing all right. Mm. I shouldn't have let him go. Oh, now, come on. He's a big boy, but he can take care of himself. No, no. Just that no matter how much older you boys get, I still think you're just my little boy. <laughs> yes, I always will. But if you want, I'll ride over and see how he's making out. You like that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I would. Such a quiet little town after all. You get a few minutes of peace every day, about sundown. Gives the day people a chance to get into their houses and the night people a chance to come out from under their rocks. Hey, look here, Chip, you've been here for 12 years now. How come you ain't done something about it? I guess a man kind of gets used to people telling him what to do. Well, not a law man. People don't tell a law man what to do. Tell him what they think is right and what they think is wrong, and he takes over from there. Yeah, that sounds good, Hoss. But doing it ain't easy. Well, I didn't say it was. Well, I guess it's time. Yeah, it's time for what? Go down the swim, pick up those straight hands. Uh, now, boys, he is disturbing the peace now, Sheriff. Well, what are they doing? Well, what difference does it make? I'm a citizen and a taxpayer, and I'm making a complaint. Them boys are disturbing the peace. <laughs> So what are you all arrested now 
attention again, Chip. All right, boys, you're under arrest. That goes for you too, Bubba. Oh, no, 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 not him. He's still got some money left. Yeah, I got me a whole bag full of... Gold? It's gone! Uh, Lily. Now, Harvey, I wouldn't do a thing like that. I may be pretty, but I'm still honest. Why, underneath all this, I got a heart of gold. Yeah, and somewhere underneath all that, you got a bag of gold. Now, give it back to him. Go on. Drunk and disorderly, disturbing the peace and causing a public nuisance, five dollars a piece. Put the money on the desk and get out. The bills of the guards do not grind exceedingly slow in this town. <laughs> Say that again. started to fight with me. <laughs> Is that all? Well, Your Honor, these men are charged with assaulting an officer of the law. We wasn't assaulting an officer. We just fighting with Hawes. Well, it's the same difference. Now, don't interrupt, Sheriff. You made the charge. Now let him answer it. We just settling up a grudge with Hawes. It's just between him and us. It had nothing to do with the law or him being an officer. Then you didn't intend the law no harm. Oh, no, sir. We just wanted to whoop Hoss. That being the case, not guilty. Run right along, boys. Your Honor, these fellas attacked me. It was between you and them. And the law is not here to settle your personal matter. But, Your Honor, they I... were not mad at the law, Sheriff. They were mad at you. All right. They're guilty of assault and battery, then. <laughs> Possibly, but that isn't what you charge them with. Now, don't forget the letter of the law, Sheriff. I won't forget the letter of the law if you don't forget the intent. The... Even a sheriff can be charged with contempt. Run along, boys. Thanks a lot, Uncle Jeff. See you Sunday. Matthew. Tell your mother I'll be there about the usual time. Yes, sir, Uncle Jess. Good afternoon, Sheriff. Your Honor. Yes. Judge. Yes. I know this is maybe a ridiculous question, but them three boys, they're your nephews. Yes, that's right. 
their mother is my baby sister. Uh, you knew they was guilty. Well, yes, of course I did. Then how come you let them go? Well, for a very simple reason. If they went to jail, it would break their mother's heart. Oh. Good afternoon, Miss Harris. I tried to tell you. It didn't do any good to arrest those boys. Yeah. I'm beginning to understand how this town got its name. It could be worse. Yeah, I reckon it could. It could be raining all day, every day. Somebody has to teach him some manners. Don't call my son a little animal. He at least breathes now and then, which is more than I can say about yours. My son is the cleanest boy in the second grade. And the oldest. Well, he wouldn't be if yours ever got out of the first grade. Ladies. Oh, just keep out of this. Mama. Mama, he hit me. You lay a hand on my son, and you will have the devil to pay and me to reckon with. Which is what I say. Ladies, ladies, please, please. <laughs> Meets. In about six months. The trouble is, them that make the biggest messes also pass the law. Hey, Sheriff, sure. some guy been sneaking around town all morning. He's over the bank in that alley. Yeah? Yeah. Pleasure is mine, sir. All mine. Who that was? 
Hello, Sporting Jack Clinton. Well, of course. He's my biggest depositor. Checking and savings. You know where he gets his money? Nope, never asked. And he never said. So I'm not surprised. None of my business. And it's none of yours. Well, what do you think of that? I think the more I see this town, the more I see why they need some law and order. for nothing here in California? Why, uh, they don't even spit on the street here. They're little angels. One of them's even been known to go to church on Sunday. Well, wait, wait a minute. You mean nobody in this whole town cares who they are or what they've done? Not as long as they pay their bills. Tip heavy. And don't bother nobody. I don't understand these people. Look, you want to be smart? Take the badge off, put it on the desk. Let's go get your horse and get out of here. Not yet, Joe. These people don't care. Well, I do. And it bothers me, and I'm going to do something about it. How do you feel about it, Chip? I've been a lawman 12 years, and I don't like what's going on in this town. There's nothing I can do about it. You ever try? I did, a number of times. And people complain that what I was doing was bad for business. As fast as I could pick them up, they turn them loose. What would you say if I was to tell you we're going to put this town in order? I'd say you had rocks for brains. But I'd back you all the way. Good. Joe, as of now, you're a deputy. Two dollars a week. I don't think I want the job. Now, come on, Joe. I'm going to need all the help I can get. All right, I still think you're making a mistake. Foss. I just came in to tell you that the Clanton game's in town. Yeah, but I think you also ought to know... That everybody in town don't give a hoot one way or another. Yeah, besides that... I better stay out of their way. I'm afraid that you're... I won't take that advice. So I came to offer my help. Yeah, thanks. If all the towns in the whole world for you to take up preaching in and to preach the gospel, why did you choose this one? Well, Horace, I figured as long as I was fishing for the souls of sinners, I might just as well fish where the big ones are. Well, let's go out there and see if we can put a couple on our hooks. And just how do you intend doing that? Well, first I gotta get your attention. Preacher, since you don't wear a gun or a badge, you keep your eye on the plantains after you send that telegram. Chip, you go on over to the bank. Don't make a move if you hear from me. Yeah. <laughs> Folks in this town have been using the law for their own convenience too long. They gotta learn that it works 24 hours a day and it's equal for everybody. There he is now. So what? There he is. What are you gonna arrest him for? Anything. Come on. Swing with the right, why? Ah, uh, that's what I thought she said. You're under arrest for inciting a riot, Your Honor. A what? A riot. 
Joe, get these boys from the public crawling for inciting a riot. Uh, Sheriff, you can't do this. Well, what? We're just settling our differences. Oh, well, that's not the way to do it. That's where everybody else does it. But not anymore. Since when? Since now. Says who? Says me. Let's go. Oh. I happen to be the judge here and a model citizen of this town, and I'm telling you, you cannot do this. Mm-hmm. That's the letter of the Trump's charge, and you can't make it stick. Mm-hmm. But it isn't the letter of the law, ain't it? It'll be thrown out of court. Yeah, probably. And what's more, just who's going to try this case with me in jail? Oh, I'll probably have to go get the circuit, Judge. It may take him two or three weeks to get here. Two or three weeks? Oh, my mama! Let's see what we can do about that, Pete. Didn't I tell you boys that fighting was wrong? No. I didn't? No. Well, didn't anybody tell you? No. Oh. I see. I am sick and tired of you and your whole family. Ma, I want you to know that my family is one of the oldest in town. Well, I always said you look young for your age. Whoa. Ladies. My age? I don't know who paints your face, but whoever it is does a beautiful job and ought to sign his work. Ladies. Oh, you keep out of this. I just wanted to tell you that... My face is not painted. This is my natural color. Then why does it come off on your collar? You're under arrest for creating a public disturbance. Lock him up, Joseph. Oh! Ladies. Ladies, right this way, please. Send a telegram. Send it. We got an answer. They'll be waiting. Good. They in there? Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Do you mind if I had a little talk with the prisoners while you're gone? Go right ahead. I think they'll be in a mood to listen. I need a posse. That's 
See a sign of that strike. Well, this is it. Here, this is where they're at. Well, this is where I'm arresting the bank robbers, and that's you, Jack Clem. You're under arrest. Can't do that, Sheriff. We ain't wanted in California. We ain't been in California for about the last five minutes. We're in Nevada. Ah, uh, yes, but you're a California sheriff, and you've got no authority in Nevada. That's right. All right, boys, come on out. Look around you, Jack. <laughs> to see you, Paul. Yeah, kind of relieved to see you, too, sir. There for a while. I didn't know whether I was leading them or they was chasing me. You got a list of banks that were robbed. Good. Now, give me them bank books. Very good. Paul, I'll see you. Thank you much. I know all of you. And you're all for the law. One hundred percent. Just as long as it applies to the other fellow. And that brings up the question, is the law the master or the servant of the people? receiving stolen property. That ought to be good for 10 years. I'll take care of it right yeah, away. I would. Well, there'll be a federal marshal by next week to make sure it's done properly. You've all been living by your own set of rules for a long time now. But from now on, you're going to live by a different set. The ones in here. charged. I demand a trial. 
You do? Even if I have to conduct it myself. I, uh, I find you all guilty of various and sundry charges. Anybody got anything to say before I pass sentence? sentence is 10 days of hard labor. Including me. And anybody who isn't out on that street helping to clean up this town at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning is going to jail for 30 days. Reverend, that was a great sermon. I was just getting started, Judge. Well, you just pick up on Sunday where you left off, and I'll be in the first row. Hey, see the boys? Yeah, that's all. I told him. Go home and not come back to town till they can learn how to behave. Sounds good. Like what happened? Well, nothing special. I think they'll probably go home when they wake up. Hey, hey! <laughs> good for you, Jim. <laughs> well, Joe, you ready to go home? Oh, sir, let's go. Wait a minute. You can go. If you leave now, what'll happen to this town? Why, Judge, I don't think anything's going to happen in this town that your new sheriff here can't take care of. Awesome. Right, Reverend? Joe, take care. Thank Ben for me. Well, it is. Let's go, Jim. <laughs> Remember, Trump, we ain't likely to forget it, Susan. Adios.